A guy willing to die for freedom, liquid paper, and Kenneth Cole are all on this day. Hey, welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is March 23rd. It is the 83rd day of the year. There are also 283 days left in 2020. It is the fourth day of spring, and there are 90 days left until summer. And currently in Chicago, as I record this, it's snowing. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people there thinking that whole spring thing is a bunch of BS. It is also National Puppy Day. National Puppy Day seeks to celebrate the unconditional love that puppies bring to people's lives. It is also a day to help save orphan puppies across the globe. Now, on their website, they give a definition of what a puppy is. And um, I think everyone knows, and I don't think they needed to put on there. I think it was a bit overkill. I mean, it's common sense. It's like telling people water is wet. But in case you don't know what a puppy is, I made this little video. This is a puppy. This is a mess. All right, let's see what past March 23rds have given us. 1775, Patrick Henry delivers his speech, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death, at the St. John's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Virginia. Henry is credited with having swung the balance in convincing the convention to pass the resolution delivering Virginian troops to the Revolutionary War. Most historians say this speech helped fuel the resolve of the American troops throughout the war. Among the delegates on the convention were future U.S. Presidents Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. 1806, traveling through the Louisiana Purchase and reaching the Pacific Ocean, explorers Lewis and Clark and their Corps of Discovery begin their arduous journey home. You know, it's really weird about that one. They didn't have anyone die on the trip to the West Coast, but on the way back, they had quite a few die, which is amazing. I can't believe that they made it there with no, you know, loss of life. 1857, Elijah Otis' first elevator is installed at 488 Broadway, New York City. At the age of 40, while cleaning up a factory and growing tired of hauling trash up and down flights of stairs, he wondered if there was a better way. There was, but the hoist elevators were unsafe and he didn't want to fall 20 floors when the rope snapped. So he went to work and he developed the Otis elevator. After having several sales, Otis took the opportunity to make the elevator company, initially calling it Union Elevator Works and later Otis Brothers and Company Elevators. They're still in business to this day with all their ups and downs. 1862, the American Civil War, the first battle of Kernstown, Virginia, marks the start of Stonewall Jackson's Valley Campaign. Although it was a Confederate defeat, the engagement distracted federal efforts to recapture Richmond, Virginia. 1868, the University of California is founded in Oakland, California when the Organic Act is signed into law. This is an act of the United States Congress that establishes a territory of the United States and specific on how it's governed, or an agency to manage certain federal lands. In the absence of an organic law, a territory is classified as unorganized. That is how my office is classified too, unorganized. 1888, in England, the Football League, the world's oldest professional association football league, which is soccer to us here in the United States, meets for the first time. The Football League consists of 69 professional association football clubs in England and three in Wales. 1933, the Reichstag passes the Enabling Act of 1933, making Adolf Hitler dictator of Germany. This gave Hitler the power to enact laws without the involvement of the Reichstag or any other government entity. The Enabling Act gave Hitler all the powers he needed to abolish most civil liberties in Germany and transferred the state powers to the Reich government. The combined effect of the laws was to transform Hitler's government into a legal dictatorship. 1960. NASA launches Gemini 3, the United States' first two-man space flight. The crew was Gus Grissom and John Young. 2001, the Mir space station is disposed of, breaking up in the atmosphere before falling into the southern Pacific Ocean near Fiji. Mir was the first modular space station and was accessible in orbit from 1986 to 1996. It had a greater mass than any other previous spacecraft. Great story about this station. Sergei Krikalev, I believe it's pronounced, was in the space station when the Soviet Union collapsed. Like the country that put him up there. He wasn't able to come home and he wound up spending two times longer than originally planned to be in orbit. While in orbit, a lot of things went down. The city where he lived was no longer called Leningrad. It was now St. Petersburg. While in orbit, he had actually orbited the Earth 5,000 times and the territory of his own country had shrunken by more than 5 million square kilometers. When he returned, the Soviet Union was now called Russia and the Berlin Wall had come down. His income went from being considered upper middle class to being half of what a bus driver made. Makes. Born on March 23rd, 1924, Betty Nesbeth Graham, American inventor, she invented liquid paper. She invented the first correction fluid in her kitchen, starting out with a common kitchen blender. She called the fluid mistake out and started providing it to co-workers in small bottles, which the brand's name was displayed on. She obviously later sold it and they changed it to liquid paper. She is also mom to one of the monkeys. Michael Nesbitt is her son, musician, 
producer. Always thought that was interesting. 1954, Kenneth Cole is born. American fashion designer, founder Kenneth Cole Productions. This was an American fashion house that was founded in 1982 by Kenneth Cole and Sam Edelman. And I know there's a bunch of his stuff in my house right now. Died on March 23rd. 2013, Joe Weider, Canadian-American bodybuilder and publisher and co-founder of the International Federation of Bodybuilders and Fitness. He died at the age of 93 due to heart failure in Los Angeles. He was friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger and helped a lot of those guys out in the early days of their career when bodybuilding was a really big thing. I was getting Muscle and Fitness magazine all the time. 2016, Ken Howard, American actor known for his role on 30 Rock, Blue Bloods, and Cold Case. He died at age 71 of pneumonia complications. He also had shingles and prostate cancer, they say. He was also the star of that television show from 1978 to 1981 or two called White Shadow. I love that show. I don't know why. I don't even like basketball. All right, so that's March 23rd. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Like I said on my other channel, we're going through some really weird times right now. Everyone stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Be nice to each other.